What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 111 of the Rise to Glory here at Gibraltar Apex and today I have for you guys the end of season review for this our 15th season at the club. Today unlike my normal end of season reviews uh, we're only going to be doing the one live com. The reason for that being neither of the matches that we had in cup finals at the end of the year were against Gibraltar Lions. We actually beat them prior to the final. As a result today we're taking on College Europa. As you can see here we also took them on in the uh, what do you call it, the Senior League Cup. We won that game 7-1 so really Today's game should be hopefully be fairly convincing. Anyway, of course, to start the end of season live com, I think it's best to kind of look through the uh, kind of stats in the league and uh, the team of the year and such. So I'm not going to find the news item. And uh, one thing that actually struck me this year about the uh, team of the year was the fact that we didn't we didn't have many players in it. Well, I said we didn't have many players in it. You guys will see very shortly. We had players in it, just not as many as perhaps you'd expect. Either way, player of the year this year went to Paul Smith. He got 25 goals in 23 games from left midfield. Tuzon came runner-up with 47 goals. And uh, as you can see, Christian Mendes rounding up the top three with 14 goals and an 8.69 average rating. Tuzon got top goal scorer. You can see he got 47 goals in 25 games. A really great return for him. Paul Smith got 25 in 20. Uh, oh, sorry, 25 goals and 20 assists. And uh, a new player, Yatabari, uh, getting in the goal scoring charts. This for Gibraltar Lions, the Mali international, actually on loan from a Turkish side, I believe. I can't say the Turkish team's name, but you can see how good he is. He's a very good player. He's joined them from, uh, I guess that's Trabzonspor. Uh, if I've if I've said that right, let me know. I doubt it. But uh, he looks like quite a good player. So good to see that you know Gibraltar Lions. They're able to loan in players of that kind of quality. Anyway, young player of the year actually went to a player we sold this year, Annabel Perez, who we let go to Gibraltar Lions. He's had a very good first year at the club, not entirely surprised by that. I thought he was a very good player with some potential, unfortunately, he was just never going to get the game time at us. I do feel like this year, one of the reasons perhaps we don't have the uh, young player of the year and the uh, kind of team of the year dominated by our team is just because of how much I've rotated the squad. When we go over the squad shortly, you'll see that uh, this year I have rotated the team a lot. There's not many teams who have played above kind of 20 league games for us. As a result, perhaps a little bit harder for players to break into the side. You can see we only have five players in the team of the year, but Ludwig Young in golf, Rijer, Mendes, Paul Smith, Tuzon, kind of to be expected really. You can see Smith dedicated his award to us for the player of the year. And you can see here, um, Smith... He's not been playing for Australia, which I think is absolutely mental. Uh, he's been out of the squad for a little while now. I think it's something like three years. I'm really hoping he is going to get a chance to play for Australia. It's ludicrous he isn't, but it is making him slightly hungry for that move away from the club. The prospect of perhaps uh, having a better chance to play for Australia. Anyway, before we get into the game, I feel like it's a good chance to have a look through the team. So we'll start by looking at the goal scorers. You can see two's on. 73 goals he finished with, absolutely mad. He got 47 in the league this year, which surpassed his previous record and the league record for last year of 46 goals. He actually got 73 in all competitions. Last year he got 62 in all competitions. I mean, not a bad return for him. 135 goals over the last two years. I'm pretty sure most players would be fairly happy with that. Paul Smith getting runner-up. You can see Van Dyke got 27 goals for us, but he only played 18 games, of course, was out for three to four months with a fractured skull earlier on in the year. That definitely played into that and just a lack of first-team football. And perhaps another reason why Van Dyke didn't play quite so much was because of the emergence of Nick Austin this year, another Australian. Very good player, this guy. The young forward, um, just been a great talent for us. He's been very good. I mean, we bought him a few years ago, and I loaned him for, to Gibraltar Lions at the time, and he played fairly well for them last year. I decided to give him a lot of chances this year, and he has developed as a result. All in all, I think he's going to be a very good forward for us in the future. One thing I really dislike about him, and I'm trying to tra kind of train it out of him, is the preferred move looks for the pass rather than attempting to score. Don't know how he got that trait. I really wish he didn't have it. And as I said, yeah, we're trying to get that tutored out of him if we can. But he's a very good player, and despite looking for the pass, he did get 24 goals in all competitions. So still confident in his own ability to shoot. Christian Mendes, the right midfielder, ended up with 21 goals and 26 assists. He had a very good year, the Colombian. And uh, another player who wasn't playing at us this year, but of course we signed in January, a club record fee of £6 million, I believe, Mosca. Uh, he's, of course, on loan at Vasco. You can see uh, he's improved a little bit, not perhaps as much as I was hoping for. He's still got time to develop. He's still got another six months of his loan in Brazil. You can see he's got 10 goals in 17 games last year. Uh, the season, oh, sorry, this year, I forget that the Brazilian season 
kind of runs from January till November time. You can see that during his second spell, of, second half of his loan after January of this year. Wait, how does this work? It's really confusing, isn't it? Because you can see actually. Um, these were the stats before we signed him. He scored 16 in 32. We then bought him and loaned them back to him, but it was in the same year, and he got 10 goals in 17. That's weird. It's weird how it split them up, but that was the same year. But you can see this year started in a similar vein of form, still scoring lots of goals. Hopefully that will kind of continue over when he comes to us. Either way, if we look on the assist charts, Paul Smith and Christian Mendes up there. Graphite had a fantastic second half to the season. 19 assists for a player who he signed in January. A fantastic return for him. 14 assists in 10 games. Been a, a very good player for us, of course. Brought him in on a free to replace Marquez, and he's looking like an inspired signing right now. A player who I definitely think has a long-term future at the club. Joey Bouchard also up there. He doesn't ever get as many assists as I think he perhaps should. The young Canadian playing in that deep line playmaker role. And, well, I say young Canadian now. Of course, he is now 26. This is his eighth season at the club, which is absolutely kind of crazy to see. You can see this year, four assists and two goals. A little bit lower than previous years, but actually an improvement in terms of his average ratings on last year. And, well, it's difficult to fault a player who has an average career rating of 8.08 .08 with over 100 assists. Really hope to keep it for a long, long time, Joe. Bouchard. Of course, he's got a contract that runs out in 2034, so in four years' time, but we have got the optional contract extension of three years, and that is a similar deal, of course, with Paul Smith. Either way, Jason Hall also worth perhaps a little mention. 11 assists for him, been out for a long, term, uh, long time with a torn cough, mu cough muscle. The fullback's physicals really have declined as a result. I'm hoping he's going to come back stronger from the injury, but it is going to hurt his development. At 22, a player who was tipped to improve a lot, really, by our kind of staff. Unfortunately, the injury really has hit him hard, but still a very useful, resourceful player for us to have in our team. Anyway, in terms of the average ratings, Graphite, the top performer during that second half of the year. Two's on unsurprisingly in second. Uh, perhaps another surprise addition or two. Nigel Howell doing very good for us. The Englishman, of course, signed as a backup to Smith. Did kick up a little bit of a fuss midway through the year about lack of first-team football, but you can see he has played a fair few games for us. He played 10 in the league as well as made, making three Champions League appearances. And when we've called upon him, he's done a job for us. He has also signed a mini-extension to his contract uh, for another year because that was running out at the end of next year, so he's now got two more years left on that deal. But I think he's proven himself this year. Villalba, also worth a mention, the right-back slash left-back Argentine, just a great player to have at the club. Done some fantastic work for us this year. Really has developed. Of course, one of three uh, of the Musketeers we signed last year in January. So he's now had 18 months at the club. You can see he has settled into his own. Not perhaps got the assist she'd hope he'd get, but nevertheless, been a very good player for us and been kind of a staple of the first team, really, quite surprisingly, at 37. I will now use this opportunity to talk about the other Musketeers that we signed last year. Perhaps not hit the ground running quite as much as Villalba. Here we have Miguel Gennari. Of course, was originally Argentine has since taken up Italian nationality, which he also had, but at 19 years old, he's not shown too much in the way of improvements and signs of improvement. Of course, shown us for £3.8 million. That said, you can see he has played a few games this year, 11 league appearances, and he has got an 8.04 average rating, so when he has been called upon, it's not like he's been completely useless. The other player we have, perhaps the one that I kind of thought the most of, uh, Cabral, of course, a very, very talented left midfielder. And uh, we brought him in. You can see he's been out of a sprained ankle. He has shown signs of improvement this year, the 20-year-old, but I don't think he's going to be worth the money we paid for him. He paid £4.2 million. You can see he had a really good kind of season last year. This year, I decided to demote him to the reserves because the left midfielder position for us is just so competitive. And he has struggled. That said, in the reserve team, he has got 20 goals and 23 assists. So perhaps uh, certainly worth considering at least bringing him back into the first team array. You can see in the reserve league, we actually won the league here. Uh, we won it with 81 points. We won every single game. Uh, we conceded 10 goals, which is a little bit disappointing, really. Uh, but yeah, our reserve team very much following the trend of our own team, I guess you could argue. So anyway, that's a little bit about some of the players. We'll get into the live comp today, and then I will go through some more players, perhaps when we go through the starting lineup and a few other bits and pieces. Uh, plenty to talk about, though. Uh, of course, College Europa, they're a good side. When we first started this save, they were a very dominant side as well in the nation. But in recent years, they have struggled. You'll notice Ludwig Young travelling on international duty. Unfortunately, that means he won't be with us. So we are going to have to go with Aaron Romero or Alberto Romero in goal, the Gibraltarian goalkeeper. Going to be a little bit of a test for him. We've already talked about Villalba and Graphite, but I feel like Frigia and Mustafa 
deserve a mention this year. Frigier, 26 years old, two more seasons and he will be eligible to play for Gibraltar if he wants to. This year he has had a little bit of interest and he has been kicking up a little bit of a fuss behind the scenes about potentially wanting to move on, but I am very determined to keep hold of him. Mustafa this year has improved a lot. You can see had a little bit of a decline of late. But he's improved a hell of a lot. He's very good. He did actually have, I believe, 18 heading and 17 marking at one point. So perhaps a little bit disappointing to see them drop again. But you can see a very good player. His pace has increased by one more point. It's not a glaring weakness like it once was. I believe when he signed for us, he had 8 acceleration and 8 pace. That has slowly improved. At 21 years old, now really showing signs of maturity. Very excited for his future at the club. He did have a few bids in January. But unlike a few players, he really wasn't kicking up too much of a fuss about wanting to leave. Which is quite nice. Anyway, moving on to the midfield, we've talked about Smith. Uh, we're going to start with Mora, I think, at centre defence in mid for today's game. A player who I'm actually now training to play as a striker. And the reason for that being is, I think it's a role that he can play for us. He's struggled to kind of, you know, be the go-to player, I guess, in our midfield. But I look at him as a complete forward. He has a lot of potential to play that role. And I think as a backup striker and a good centre mid, he'd be a fantastic player for the squad. 21 years old, so still time to improve potentially. Uh, he's been good for us, he's been very good and I'm hoping that today he can put in a good performance of course alongside him we have Bouchard who we've already talked about to his right Mendes, to Zonam Van Dijk we've talked about on the bench Juan Manuel Carlo of course a player we signed from Real Madrid on loan uh, this year for a very cheap fee with the option to buy in January it really hasn't had that big of an impact on the side probably will actually terminate his contract in the off season this year uh, we have got a few new additions coming in the defence so you know, makes sense to perhaps let him go. We've also got Rodrigo Romero, the Argentine who, of course, signed for us this year, was kind of the go-to guy as a replacement for Walter Del Sol. He signed for £4.5 million. Been very happy with his contribution to the team. A little bit disappointed that he hasn't improved in his tackling. It's been 11 since he joined the club, and that was one of the glaring weaknesses he had in his game. You can see, if we look at my coaching, training his tackling, because it is just the thing that lets him down alongside his bravery, but He's a very good player in terms of his mentals. His physicals are good. I like how good his acceleration is. And when he's been called upon, he's been a solid addition to the team. Daniel Martinez also done well. Perhaps a player I might sell this year, which might come as a little bit of a surprise. You can see he is transfer listed, and he is listed as not needed. The reason for that being is he's on £26,000 a week, which is a lot of money for us, and as good and resourceful as he is, if I could get a few million pounds for this guy, I'd probably take it. You can see he's only made 10 appearances in the league, four of which were on off the bench. Uh, and made five appearances in the Champions League, but only had one start in those games. And as much as I like him as an impact sub, he's just on far too much money. And in reality, it could be spent better elsewhere. Mulu, a player who I brought into the side with a lot of expectation, really came in as a backup. You know, a loan signing, pretty hefty loan fee of £2.1 million. Uh, probably a player who, again... Like a few of us, I might terminate his contract in the off-season this year. We have, of course, and I'll just remind you if you didn't see the episode when I talked about it, we have got a new man coming in, and that man is Helik, who is a, a Polish player, and he looks very good, and I feel like he's kind of going to offer what Mulu hasn't this year, and I think he's going to be a much better addition to the side, and, well, I don't know if there's going to be a spot for Mulu really in the side, because he just hasn't impressed me that much. Anyway, Leo Palmer, a player we signed just as a backup, He's done his job when we called upon him on the odd occasion. He's an okay player, of course. We signed him for 400k. Wasn't expecting fireworks, but I've got what I expected from him. And uh, yeah, we'll go through a few more players after the game. Let's get into it. We're taking on College Europa. Okay, we stick with a 4 4 2 attack. You can see they are going to play a 4 5 1. We beat them in the Senior League Cup final. I'm hoping we can now mimic that in the Rock Cup final. I'm a little bit excited to see at the end of this game just kind of what we're going to have in the way of um, prize money for the Rock Cup because it's a competition that has been raising and rising in reputation over the last few years and well it'd be kind of interesting to see how much prize money there's going to be now. I believe last year it was a few hundred thousand pounds. I wonder if we'll break the million pound mark this year. Anyway, I'm going to use this episode and this match as a, just a little bit of a backdrop, I guess, to talk about a few other things going on at the club. We should win this very convincingly. Of course, if we score any crazy goals or when we do score, I will, of course, acknowledge it. And can we score from kickoff? Mendes, back post, who's on there? 1-0 after 50 seconds. It's the perfect start. Two's on. 74th goal of the season. Could he get 75, if not more? That's got to be the dream today. But anyway, you will notice we are playing at home today at the Space Park. You will also notice the pitch is in terrible condition. I'm really hoping we can get it sorted out in the off-season, although I've not had the ability to request the board to relay the pitch, so I can only assume either they've already planned for it or I have to wait until the end of the year. 
But in terms of the space park, the average attendances this year, they've been pretty solid. You know, in Europe, it's been a sellout pretty much every time. You know, we've been filling it up with 13,000 fans. When the international teams use the stadium again, filling it up. I believe in the Senior League Cup, we were averaging an attendance of about 6,500. And in the Premier Division, we were averaging an attendance in the region of 8,000 fans. So we're not selling out every week. But when we take on the likes of Gibraltar Lions and when we play in Europe in these massive matches, then it is a sellout. And that's pretty good. And that's all I can really expect. Of course, we are the only club, and I, in case you didn't know, we are still the only club who have our own ground now in Gibraltar. The rest of the sides all still playing at the Victoria Stadium. We are now 3-0 up after 10 minutes. It's all ready going pretty well this game. You see the Gibraltar Apex fans, they are loving it. The ball in, Van Dyke with a flick on and well, Smith missed the initial effort. It was actually a really good save, but the rebound is buried home. In terms of other stuff, we did improve the training facilities this year. I've actually now requested them for to be improved again, which is really, really promising. That does mean, I believe, that we are going to get to the stage where we have top youth facilities and top training facilities. Of course, our youth recruitment is something that is still held back. Youth recruitment, if you don't know in FM, it's the thing that kind of determines how good the potential of players you sign is. Unfortunately, because of our nation, you can't and our nation's rep, you can't just constantly upgrade your youth recruitment, you know, through the roof. In England, of course, you can hit that massive cap, whereas in Gibraltar, you're limited in terms of how much you can improve it based off a, a number of factors. I'm not entirely sure what they are. It's something that we've not been able to improve in, well, almost a decade now. I'm hoping we're slowly going to get towards the part where we can improve the youth recruitment that little bit more. I think that'd be a nice thing to at least try and do. So that's something to look forward to as we do now make it 4-0. Van Dyke just got a great little goal as well while I was rambling on there. So yeah, the youth facilities and training facilities are coming good. In terms of our coaching setup, that's still really, really strong. Uh, can't argue one bit with kind of the coaching setup we have. We did actually lose one of our coaches, and to be honest, he was one of our backup coaches. He went to Lincoln City to become a manager, which was kind of interesting this year. I'm hoping that's not going to be too big of a problem. Of course, I mentioned in January how we had a lot of players kind of interested in leaving. And uh, I'm quite confident I can keep hold of the key players just because of how long their contracts are. You know, I can very much dig my heels in and say, no, you're not leaving with the likes of Bouchard and Smith on seven-year contracts, basically, because of the optional contract extension. When it comes to my coaching staff, however, that could become a little bit more problematic. In truth, I've not really looked too much into my co coaching setup over the last few years. I kind of had it set up, well, you know, four or five years ago now. I've just renewed the contracts of my coaches, physios, and then looked for replacements if certain kind of members of staff retire. But all in all, you know, the coaching setup is as good as we can really expect it to be. That said, it probably is overdue a little bit for revamp, and perhaps this summer will provide an opportunity for me to bring in some new players. As Van Dijk out wide, can he get the ball in? Graphite, lots of assists this year. He gets another. Paul Smith at the back post. Makes it 5-0, and it's not even half-time, and it's going it's going pretty well, this game. So yeah, that's a little bit more about what's going on at the club. I'm kind of using this opportunity now to fill you in on lots of little details you might have missed. Um, oh, a transfer budget for the year was set. We have a, a fairly healthy wage budget. We've got a few hundred thousand pounds to spend if we want to spend it. Ultimately, we probably won't. Uh, but our transfer budget this year is in the region of just over £10 million, so... That's kind of nice. In terms of what I think we'll sign this year, honestly, I'm not entirely sure. Last year, we really spent our transfer budget wisely and as well in January to just kind of strengthen the squad. Two's on. Oh, it's offside. I thought he was going to score his 75th goal of the year. Paul Smith with an injury. Let's, let's, get, let's get him off. No point in risking it now. I can't remember what I was saying now. What was I saying? I was on a talking point. Oh, uh, what was it? To do with, something to do with January. Oh, the squad and building for the future. What, what are my plans? I've got to be honest, I'm quite happy with the balance of the squad at this point. I don't really intend to sell too many players unless exceptional offers come in for them that I simply put can't refuse. The likes of like the Walter Del Sol bid and the Alex bid and perhaps the Marquez bid debatably. The £10 million, you know, that's a lot of money for us to receive. Um, but no, I look at our team, I'm very happy with the overall balance of it. I'm looking forward to having Helic as a new striker edition. I feel like at the end of the year, we might get rid of a few of the backup players and look for better backups. I'd also like to get a few more versatile players, players who can play multiple positions, because that is something that we have lacked over the last few years. You know, I look at players like JJ and Mora, players who can just play centre mid. Whilst they are fantastic players, just having players who are capable of playing a few more positions is very, very useful to have. And it allows us to be a little bit more dynamic in terms of how we can change games. Particularly in Europe, you know, where perhaps we have a weaker squad, perhaps we want to completely change the system. Having that kind of real ability to just, you know, switch every position around is something that really can't be understated. 
Anyway, two's on bringing it forward here. We're still looking for that 75th goal. Graphite, Van Dijk is there. Can Graphite get it in again? To Mendes with the shot blocked away. We've had nine clear-cut chances in this game. College Europa yet to have a shot on target. Worth considering as well. College Europa, fourth in the league. They're not a bad team in terms of Gibraltarian football. We're just a lot better than them and we're proving it here. Perhaps a little bit fortunate this year to play uh, Gibraltar Lions not in the finals. It's kind of been a bit weird how it's worked out because over the last few years, as far as I can remember really, uh, it's been Gibraltar Lions we've met in the finals. I think actually we met Co College Europa who were playing today a few years ago in maybe the Senior League Cup final. But with the exception of that, to my knowledge, it's just been Gibraltar Lions after Gibraltar Lions. That was an insane finish, by the way, by Van Dijk. Um, it's a little bit disappointing there. It isn't a more kind of close-cut game, of course, this year. Gibraltar Lions did step up. Um, they actually got another draw against us this year. I felt like I talked about that a little bit. And actually, when we played them, I believe in the, it was in the semi-final of the Rock Cup. The game went to extra time, and we ended up winning through a late, late goal. I think it was Mulu who got it, a bit of an unlikely hero. But that's how us go through. We will have a quick look over the fixtures this year, although it's kind of as you'd expect since that kind of Napoli second leg. We've been winning. We've just been kind of slowly plodding on through Van Dijk. Can he score his, is that his hat trick? I'm not sure. I've lost count. Is that his hat trick? I don't know. It might be his fourth. I, I, I don't know at this point. There's been lots of goals this game. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, we set a new record. 254 games unbeaten, I believe, in the Premier Division. Of course, we have drawn two games in the last two years, but we have won every other game. So to go 250 games unbeaten in the league, it's not a bad little feat. I believe that is now going back something like nine and a half years, which is a little bit crazy. And in fact, when you think about it, there's 27 games in a season. So to go 254 unbeaten means we're, yeah, we are nine and a half seasons uh, unbeaten, basically. If we can make it so it's 10 seasons unbeaten or 10 years unbeaten, that would be kind of insane. I was a little bit worried after last year Gibraltar Lions were going to cause us some problems because they, of course, had that quite formidable performance against us at the end of season commentary last year. Uh, that said, you know, this year they've been... I don't want to say that they've been disappointing Gibraltar Lions, but they've not been the team that I thought they might be in terms of how much they challenge us. It's been fairly convincing when we played them for the most part, with the exception of that one draw against them. That said, of course, it's worth noting that this year uh, we have a few more kind of Euro European competition spots. In fact, the top five in the Premier Division, assuming we win this competition, uh, will get spots in Europe. And that is going to be ourselves and Gibraltar Lions in the Champions League and then three Europa League spots. So it can be interesting to see what those other teams can do there. Worth considering, however, those teams really have struggled. Of course, a great achievement this year for Gibraltar Lions to make it to the Europa League group stage. Um, hoping they can, you know, mimic that kind of success next year, although it is going to be a little bit tougher perhaps with them entering at the Champions League stage. They would have to get to the kind of playoffs uh, and then lose in order to get a Europa League spot. I can't see them get to the Champions League group stage, but you never know what could happen. Either way, great performance there, 7-0. Kind of took our foot off the gas a little bit in the second half. Two's on. You end up getting one goal in the first minute. It's 74th of the year. Van Dijk with four. I did keep count and Paul Smith with a double. Seven goals, though. Very convincing margin. Good performance there. Anyway, just think if there's any other bits we want to talk about. We have now celebrated a famous quadruple. How long is Smith out for? It's only a bruised head. We, we will move on with that. We've received £1.28 million pounds for winning the Rock Cup, so that is a crazy little achievement. Gives you an idea of how much the Rock Cup has improved as a tournament over the last few years. Squads gets, the squad gets paid a fairly hefty bonus for that. So yeah, I'm just going to look at any players we didn't talk about. We talked about Jung a little bit, but what a player he has been. Of course, he had that very memorable performance against Olympiakos. The Sweden goal, he's improved a lot this year again, and that's very good to see, and definitely a player who I want to keep around in the squad. JJ as well, he kicked up a little bit of a fuss about lack of first-team football, but he's played a fair bit, really. You can see he's played eight league games and made six appearances on off the bench. Also was a real mainstay in our Champions League squad. Anyway, Kaura, the player we signed, the Greek international, I don't even know if he's an international if I'm honest, he is an international, the Greek international we signed from uh, Arsenal, he's not had a massive impact but he's been a good backup player when we've called upon him, Taco has had another good year, uh, he of course joined us at the start of this year for a relatively shrewd I think £3.4 million, when we've called upon him he performed very well, particularly in the Olympiakos game, he was a, a very key component of that victory there, you can see of course joining from Cruzeiro, he's played 13 leagues, games for us he's played fairly well perhaps not quite as standout as I was expecting but nevertheless he's come in and he's made him a mark on the team certainly 
We have Luis Pereira, uh, who we signed this year as a backup right mid. Pleased to say that he is happy to be a backup. He's not like Howell out on the left-hand side. He kicks up a fuss about lack of first-team football. This guy, he's content to be the number two choice and perhaps even number three choice at right midfield behind Martinez. That said, though, I would like to give him a little bit more game time if I can. The Uruguayan, you know, he's got a little bit of potential to fulfil. Um, but no, he's done a job when we've called upon him and I really don't have too many complaints. Either way, I feel like I've now touched upon pretty much the entirety of the squad of, of kind of across everything. It's been a good year. It's been a good year. I mean, if we look at the fixtures here, I mentioned though that draw. You can see that we did uh, draw uh, here against Gibraltar Lions. I'm not sure why half our fixtures are missing. FM does this sometimes. There we go. Now we can see the remainder of our fixtures. So yeah, you can see we drew that game against Gibraltar Lions 1-1 in the Premier Division. Since then, fairly convincing all the way through that uh, win against Gibraltar Lions after extra time I mentioned as well with Mulu getting the goal in extra time. Uh, a big, memorable match really. Um, but yeah, it's been more of the same this year, you know. It's been not as competitive as perhaps I was hoping domestically. That said, you know, to get as far as we did in Europe is somewhat memorable. It would have been nice to go that little bit further perhaps, but... You know, at least we are still making progress. You know, I was a little bit worried perhaps we were getting stuck in the mud. We seem to have uh, broken through that now. Anyway, if we look at general info here, you can see the club's estimated value is £28 million. That is based off a few things. Worth well, noting, the chairman is willing to listen to offers. I mean, I don't know what that entails if he's going to sell the club up, of course. 15 years at the club is quite a long time for one chairman to be there, and it's obviously natural that over time you will have a, a club change hands. I'm hoping that's not going to affect us too much, of course. Really, with the mark we've left on the club, it would be extremely cruel if we were to be sacked. You can see looking at the legends, Ben Connolly, Peachman, Robson, but Paul Smith making his way onto that list, which I think is really nice, and Daniele Russo also there. Two's on now a real, real icon for the club. Uh, I mean, how can you argue with that? He's got over 135 goals in two years for us now, which is absolutely insane. I assume you will get the golden shoe as well. You can see Gary here, our former man, currently playing uh, for Rayo Vallecano. I probably pronounced that horrifically. Each of them okay for them. Uh, of course, was at, um, at Oviedo last year. Didn't really make a mark for them. The rest of our team scroll for a few familiar names. Tristan Sargent, still playing for Mons Calpe. I mean, what a player this guy was for us initially in this save. It's kind of cool to see players who started with us at the club at a very young age still playing football now and actually he has staff attributes that is kind of tempting to try and sign him as a scout one of our icons that would actually be a really a really awesome thing if we could get him in and we probably can get him in as well as a coach he has no interest in the job but i'm willing to give him a very good wage just to have a legend come back to the club he really wants to be a scout but we don't we can't have any more scouts we're already over budget on scouts apparently you know what, we'll try and sign him. If, if, if It probably won't go free, but we tried. Uh, who else have we got here? Anthony Hernandez, retired at 28. A little bit of a shame to see him kind of retire. Lorenko, where are you these days? Mozambique, and he's still at FC Metz. Is that in the second tier of France? In fact, uh, no, he's been promoted. I, I forgot, actually, he was at Angers, and then he moved to Metz. I didn't even realise he'd moved to Metz. You can see he actually moved on a free transfer He's only made three appearances for them. Never never lived up to the potential he had if he'd stayed at us. Mick Vitti, where are you, my son? You're at Brentford, out on the right-hand side for them. That last loan spell was at Wickham Wanderers. Oh, dear. How are Brentford doing in the Premier League? Let's take a look. Oh, okay, well, they won one, <laughs> they won one game all year. It's not great. But, uh, so Mick Vitti, he might get a bit more time in the Championship. Looking at the personnel... Oakley, a player I'd love to sign again, but he's playing quite a lot for Arsenal, quite a lot off the bench. Maybe a player we'll, we'll look to sign one day. I feel like he, he had such a massive impact on the club over the two years. Similar in a lot of ways to Daniele Russo, that it'd be quite nice if we could sign him back. Ramon, of course, a player who played for us for only one year and we sold him on. He's still playing his trade for Fenerbahce, of course, we sold him for £4.5 million a few years ago now. Ian Cook is still in our reserves. Jer, where are you, my friend? You are Borussia Mönchengladbach still. How are, you, how are you getting on for them? Eight goals in 30. It's not great. You're worth £18 million. I'd love to sign some of these players back. They're so good. And uh, last player we'll look at, Mark Stewart here. Uh, former man, currently playing for Huddersfield. Anyway, if we just have a quick look at the history of the club, you can see we've now won 14 Premier Divisions, 12 Rock Cups, 1 Saguna Division, 13 Pepe Reyes Cups, 9 Gibraltarian Senior League Cups. If we uh, look at the competitions, you can see them all listed here by year. I mean, if you want to pause and eye over that, feel free to. We've achieved a lot at this club already. Uh, of course, we are the only manager ever to 
be here and we've been in charge for 14 years 337 days with 534 games won 45 games drawn and 80 games lost that's it's not a bad little record anyway in terms of records highest position first in the Segunda division nothing crazy there uh, Paul Smith, most league goals for the club, so 171. Joe Pouchard, most league appearances for the club of 196. Would be awesome if he could break 200. Top league goal scorer, two's on, 47. That happened this year. Highest average rating a few years ago now, Paul Smith in the 26-27 season. Youngest ever player is Gary. Kind of cool to see players like Gary, you know, being the youngest ever player. Fastest goal, Mustafa Do Dogan scoring after nine seconds. Mustafa, whatever happened to you? You're now at Wolfsburg. He was a very good player for us when we loaned him for one year. He got 16 in 19 games. Not a bad return in the league. Uh, most goals in the game, two's on with seven. That was in this year's preseason. Not a bad return there. Cafe with 48 assists. Is he, is he still at Shakhtar? He is. Another player who I'd love to sign back, but I think the fee that they'd be wanting is a little bit out of my budget, really, at this moment in time. Youngest goal scorer is Gary. Oldest goal scorer, Diego Costa, of course. Diego, a player who played for us for a few years. You can see he had a bit of a weird end to his career, really. But uh, he, he did okay when we had him. I forgot we had Diego Costa, if I'm honest, until I remembered there. It feels like over the course of so many years, it's quite easy to kind of lose track of everything. Anyway, you can see a few other stats here. You can pause and take a look at like highest attendance, highest gate receipts. Highest win is 15 nil. Highest defeat, 7-1 against PSG. Um... Yeah, it, it, it's going well, isn't it? You can see highest league position first. Uh, record attendances or highest attendances. You can see the last three years in the Champions League, we've always had a sellout, which is kind of nice. Uh, in terms of results, 13-0, the biggest win this year. Sequences, 10 games won in a row this year. Of course, that is in all competitions. Our unbeaten record in the Premier Division, however, as I mentioned before, spans, well, 250-odd games. You can see highest transfer fee spend. We've slowly ramped up the amount of money we spend, but we are starting to make more money in sales, so it kind of all makes sense in the end. Anyway, to wrap up this, we will just take a quick look at the best 11. Overall, you can see our best 11 here. looks absolutely fantastic. Peachman and Connolly up front. Look at that. 159 goals and 99 goals for each of them, respectively. Uh, Paul Smith, 277 appearances for the club of 215 goals. Bouchard, 307 appearances for the club in all competitions. It's kind of cool to just be looking at these records and just see how much players achieved. Also nice to see Glennie Gilbert kind of lurking down here at the bottom. Kind of disappointed he decided he didn't want to stay in football after his retirement. A player I would have loved to have kept hold of. And actually, there's a few players here that I look at now and wish, well, really, that I could have signed them as coaches. But they elected they didn't want to stay in football. It's kind of understandable. You can see looking at our best 11, Young in goal, Jason Hall at right back, Danny Evans and Del Sol at centre back. Danny Evans, where are you now? He's currently playing for Brescia. I assume that's how you say it. It sounded Italian, didn't it? He uh, has played 33 games for them, but been very, very underwhelming indeed. We've got Welter Del Sol, who went to Juve. Uh, he is currently valued at £19 million. He played 23 games for the match. He was pretty disappointing. A 6.87 rating. Still can't believe we got £20 million for him. At uh, left back, we have Jay Marriott, who is playing for Real Sporting Gijon. I probably pronounced that horrific horrifically as well. Uh, you can see... 6.46 6 average rating in Liga Atalante. Pretty disappointing for him. In midfield, Paul Smith, Gary Bouchard, Lorenko. Nothing too crazy going on there. Peachman and Connolly, as I mentioned up front. Daniele Russo lurks down at the bottom here. Worth an honourable mention. I can't quite believe Tuzon isn't in the starting 11 for the best ever 11. That said, it's kind of weird to think that Ben Connolly has scored more goals than him and actually has made double the appearances that um, you know Tuzon has made. It's, it's quite easy, I think, to forget... Uh, just how many games and how many seasons Ben Connolly and Peachman have now been at the club. It's getting kind of ridiculous. It is worth noting, perhaps, uh, Tuzon's goals for this year haven't been added on yet. They'll be added on next year, so the best 11 might actually change between now and the start of next season. But regardless, kind of cool just to have a little bit of a blast from the past. Um, and that is our best 11 from last year, if you, if you want to take a look at it. Although, it's out of date now, isn't it, really? So anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up this episode for me. Hopefully you've enjoyed as always. We'll see what happens in the off-season. It'll be interesting to see how the coefficient changes kind of impact the league, how Gibraltar Lions uh, performances in Europe perhaps affect the league reputation. Hopefully I will see you guys for the next season. It's going to be season 16. Hopefully you're going to be going for those Champions League knockout stages this uh, next year after the Europa League perhaps disappointment this year. And yeah, that's all. If you've got any comments, feel free to leave them down below. If we could smash 500 likes, that would be absolutely incredible, but I don't necessarily expect us to do it. If you watched all this point, really do appreciate it. 35-minute video, lots of detail. Hope you enjoyed. It is me, Jack. 
and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.